everybody, I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's game, we've got two middle linebackers who will look to lead their defenses to victory. It's the Chiefs going up against the Broncos. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, we are at the foot of the Rockies as EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the picturesque city of Denver, Colorado. A moment ago, through a shower of pyrotechnics, it was the hometown Broncos taking the field as they get set to do battle with the Kansas City Chiefs. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Set to go now on a wet and rainy afternoon. And off we go from Sports Authority Field. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. So here come the Chiefs for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the number one overall selection back in 05 out of the University of Utah. It's Alex Smith. I think one of the things that attracted people to Alex Smith initially was his mobility, and that's never changed. That guy's a great athlete, but he's so sharp with the football, so accurate, and takes care of it so well, he rarely puts his team in bad situations. On first down, Smith. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. To throw on second down is Smith. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Brandon Marshall able to collapse the pocket and drop it for a loss of three. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, you know, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, that allows your blitzers to get there. On fourth down, on is Dustin Colquitt to kick this away. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. Now a carry, it's C.J. Anderson. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Second down following the run. Simeon gives to his fullback, Janovich. And he was very fortunate there to get out of his end zone. He maybe got back to the two-yard line. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. From the end zone, Simeon. And he'll just toss it away. 
So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Here's Riley Dixon now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he's able to get it out of there. And he'll take it on this side of midfield. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And the Chiefs will have excellent field position here as they take over. And out come the Chiefs now. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Doma Topeco able to use that strength and get him for a loss of two. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. 23 yards on the play. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. one down to about the 10-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Smith now to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Tyreek Hill that time. And it's third down. And here's a look at the defense for Denver. T.J. Ward's a three-time Pro Bowler, I believe, on the strength of his versatility. He can drop in the box and become like an extra linebacker versus the run game, but also play deep half, deep middle in terms of coverage. I love his game. I love his fiery attitude. This guy comes to play on every snap. Throwing on third down, Smith. And that is caught. Touchdown, Kansas City. Gavin Escobar from 10 yards out. And the Chiefs are going to take a first quarter lead. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to draw up those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So that drive spanned five plays, and it winds up with the Chiefs hitting pay dirt. Santos out now. He'll kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession. See if they can get a little momentum. 
And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Right, now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up, let's see what the defense does here too after a good stop. And he can't quite bring it in. Might have heard footsteps there across the middle. Second down. Well, he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. yard line. They only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Off the play fake to Charles. This is Simeon. And he's taken down. A chief sack. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Fielded at about the 28. Whoosh. Oh, nice move at midfield. see another play as time has run out on this first quarter. 7 nothing is our score. Charles and I back to Denver after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon as the Chiefs in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter as they take over following the punt with a first and ten. They go play action here on first down. Fights off the defender. And going deep for Hill. And he's got it. Touchdown, Chiefs. Tyreek Hill, 44 yards. And the Chiefs are able to grow their lead. And the defensive there, that was a battle. He just made a really nice play. A really nice play, making sure his body position was correct. And how about the throw? Zipped it in there. And it results in the touchdown. Now the point after try for Santos. And it's good to make it 14-0. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, long touchdown pass into the end zone. Santos out now. He'll kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. Now on the return here, we've got an injured player down there. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there. Second down. 
no gain on that run. And while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. To throw on second is Simeon. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Tom Bahali from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. And I know it seems like we say this a lot in broadcast booths, but a quarterback can hold on to the football too long in these situations. I think he did right there. Oh, I agree with you totally. Sometimes you have to understand situations. Get rid of the football, save some yardage to make it less to gain for the next down. Instead, he was so hipped on ball security, he held on to it and took a big sack. Simeon in need of something big following that sack, facing third and long. They'll fake the handoff. Now Simeon. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line, Justin Houston. He's the one to get him this time, and back-to-back -back sacks are going to bring up a fourth down. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Here's Riley Dixon now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And the punt goes out of bounds. Where will they put it? They'll put it just inside the 45-yard line. The Chiefs offense and Tyreek Hill heading back out onto the field. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally... He feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise, he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. That one goes for 24 yards. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jared Crick in there to get him for a loss of five. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> play action. It's Smith. Oh, nearly picked. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown in this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. You're down two touchdowns. You just know defensively, you absolutely have to come up with a big play. That nearly was one right there. Looked over at the sideline immediately after the drop and just saw the dejection. They felt it. They thought he had it. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with it. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Again, Anderson trying to run inside, but nothing there. 
No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. In just two minutes' time, don't forget, we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry. The Broncos on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 11. Simeon. And that is incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Alex Smith and company heading back out there now. And he's been good. Two first half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Back to throw, Smith. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall at the 29. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Smith now on second down. And complete. This is Albert Wilson. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Here's Smith throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Travis Kelsey, the Pro Bowl tight end, the intended target, and it's third and short. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way, so he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it, just move on to the next play. Smith going to throw on third and one. They're able to locate Wilson. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. It'll go as a gain of 10 and a Kansas City first down. I just love advanced stats. For Alex Smith last season, 2.38 seconds from the snap to the ball was out of his hand. He's Fast, quick. Fastest of any quarterback in the league. Another instance right there. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Chiefs on top as we send you on down to our studios in Orlando, where standing by is Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Broncos are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Chiefs will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Midway through the first quarter. The quick pass, it's complete, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 13-yard line. Sticking with the same drive. The quick pass and completion is made, and this play will go for six. 
they take a 7-0 lead. First and 10, Hill's gonna haul in the deep pass. And it leads to a touchdown as they move out in front, 14-0. So that'll wrap it up for us here at the EA Sports Studio. We'll head back now to Denver for the start of the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as he'll have it first to begin this third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Here's Simeon. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Broncos on third down. Not good, 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and four. Tough for Chiefs fans to watch this. Here's Jamal Charles on the carry. And not much of an opening there as he's only going to get this to about the 32. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. This is brought in at the 21. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Smith on first down. Caught here by Conley. Still shedding tackles and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Nice play for Kansas City, picking up the first 18 yards that time. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. On first and 10, Smith. And his throw is going to be incomplete. His favorite target, Travis Kelsey, the intended receiver. And it's second down. So the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Chiefs on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and three. Throwing again is Smith. And able to find Conley. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. 
And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. It's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. A good pick up there, 26 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. Albert Wilson, the intended receiver there, and that'll bring up second down. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action, maybe throwing it. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Got two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try? Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Doma Topeco in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time. And he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. you got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level. And he's able to get back on track. And after the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. And Denver getting set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Fighting through pressure. Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the free safety, Eric Berry. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Okay, partner, no surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M. And all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game as we just saw there. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. Third down, Smith, and it's complete to Kelsey. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. They call it a gain at 19, and it moves the chains. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands, the speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's the Chiefs with the lead and the football here as we get set for quarter number four. 
So they're operating in the red zone. Smith throwing again. Wide open receiver complete. And all the way down inside the five to the four. The Chiefs have got the passing game rolling a bit. And another first down. And the offense inside the five here at the four. It's first and goal. Again, Smith. Feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. Jared Crick able to use that strength and get him for a loss of two. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. They run it here. Where? And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. As we get late in this one, is altitude a factor for a visiting team in Denver? Is that something that's overplayed? No, it's real. And I know a lot of the visiting teams like to downplay it because they don't want to get into the heads of their players. But you can't avoid it. As soon as you get to the locker room, you get to the stadium, they always post it in there. Welcome to Denver. Altitude 5,280 feet. The air is rare. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line. But it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. After the main field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23 yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play caller. Because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in it, and let him fling another one. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Now it's Simeon. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Broncos on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This is third and 10. Simeon. Screen pass to Charles. Well, the screen gets seven, but it's not enough, and it'll be fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing, so they'll go Let's for go. it on fourth down. Simeon now to throw. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Seven yards on the play. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You stopped to get it done, as you noted, and they did. First down. 
And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Rameek Wilson leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Second down, here's Simeon. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 30. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a KC touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well-prepared. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is fielded at the goal line. There's the stiff arm. Trevor Simeon and the Broncos heading back out. Interesting stat line right now. Technically, he's completed four passes, two to his team and then two to the wrong team. It makes you wonder what he's seeing downfield because he has completed two passes to his own team, but the interceptions are troubling. Is he going through the wrong reads, the wrong progressions? Is he getting fooled by defenses? They've got to figure that out over on the sidelines, working on that surface pro to see what they see. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Henderson. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver has really started to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. And that is incomplete. Carlos Henderson, the intended receiver. And it's third and short. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Now let's go! 319! Ah! Simeon wants to throw on third and one. Time for a break. And the third down pass falls incomplete. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. So it's Bronco football as we get you reset here. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been terrific so far. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. This is taken at the 15. Great blocking, nearly sprung him there. 28-yard return, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Smith going to throw it. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Jared Crick in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. On second down, here's Smith. And an alley to run. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. It'll be a pickup of 13 on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. The Chiefs on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. Here it's third and two. Three, 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 three. 
They'll run now with Ware. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the long. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Simeon. And it's caught over the middle by the tight end Green. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. So this brings up a second and two. Shotgun snap for Simeon. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Here's Anderson, and he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. Now let's go. Blue Blue. On first down, Simeon. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Carlos Henderson, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength, and he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Let's go. Green, 39. Now a first down throw, Simeon. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And that will get a timeout here. They're able to stop it with one second to go in this game. Hurry up, here we go. 319. 319. One last throw here for Simeon. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Or are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com.
Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everyone, as we say so long from Denver.